Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about why settling for good holds us back from great. Why settling for good holds us back from great. I've always said that good is always the mortal enemy of great. And the reason for that is because it sucks us into our comfort zone, doesn't us? doesn't it? It sucks us into complacency. It sucks us into feeling like, hey, we're doing better than most. We're doing pretty good. And that's the beginning of the end when it comes to growth, expansion, and tapping our full potential. You know, I had a conversation with a uh, mortgage professional just the other day, and he was reaching out for ideas on how to create a breakthrough in his business. And I started off by asking him, you know, let's start off with the most important question. What's not working in your business right now as it relates to where you are and where you want to be? And he said, well, I don't do things that don't work. So there's nothing that doesn't work. Everything's working. I just want to get it working better. And I can tell right away that is evidence that that's the fruit of starting to eat from the bread of thinking your shit don't stink and that you're doing good because he was doing relatively well. He was doing better than he's ever done before. He was picking up a lot of low hanging fruit with these historically crazy low rates right now. He was doing about 70% refi and he was on track to have his best year ever this year. And so he was on track to do, you know, 150, maybe 100K, 180K gross, which would put him at around maybe 100 to 130 uh, net after taxes. And so he was feeling pretty good about himself and he should, you know, praise the progress. And he was comparing himself with colleagues and thinking, hey, I'm doing better than most. I'm doing better than average. I'm a top producer. And now he's feeling like, man, I'm kicking ass. I'm taking names. I don't do stuff that doesn't work. I only do stuff that works. But truth be told, after four years in the game, if you're only making 100K, or 130K net after taxes, I got news for you. There's a whole lot more juice we can squeeze from the fruit. And if you think that, you know, 120, 130K net after taxes is a symbol or a sign that what you're doing is dialed in and what you're doing is 100% dialed into, you know, really kicking ass and taking names, I got news for you. There's a whole other level. I mean, if you think that 100 to 120K after taxes is kicking ass and taking names and you're pretty much dialed in, chances are you're settling for good instead of stretching for great. Now, I'm not here to say that you need to be expanding for more and you need to be reaching for higher ground. You might be perfectly content and happy making 100, 120, 130, even 150 net after taxes after been in the for four or five years. So I'm not here to tell you that, you know, you need to be doing more. Greatness is different for everybody. For some people, greatness means that you're making 100 to 150K net after taxes, and you're just having a ton of fun working with your ideal clients, working on your own flexible schedule, and working 35, 40 hours a week and having lots of quality time and flexibility, lots of quality time with the family, and be able to do what you want when you want. Maybe that's greatness for you. One thing I know for certain, I know what greatness isn't in my world. Greatness isn't stagnation. Greatness isn't settling. Greatness isn't just trying to stay stuck at the same level. Greatness is about expansion. It's about growth. It's about learning. It's about moving forward. It's about conquering new mountains, not sliding down old ones. It's about having fun and being fulfilled and building new muscle and new distinction and new levels of mastery. It's about being the best version of yourself. It's about being better today than you were yesterday. It's about feeling like you're becoming the best version of yourself and you're stepping into your calling. You're stepping into that greatness that God calls you to so you can make the fullest impact using your gifts and talents and abilities to impact the world and to serve humanity. To me, that's what greatness is. And if you start to settle and you start to compare yourself with others and you start to say, hey, I'm doing better than most, and you start to sit on your laurels, 
that's not greatness. That's where you start to slip into the comfort zone that has you corrode your hunger, your thirst for expansion, for growth. And now it's about conserving what you used to have. It's about maintaining what you have and staying at that level versus expansion and growth and taking new ground and conquering new mountains. And as soon as you start to get complacent like that, you start sliding down old mountains instead of conquering new ones. So I know what greatness is not. Greatness is not settling. Greatness is not sit sitting on your laurels and growing moss and collecting dust. I know for certain that is not greatness. Greatness is always expanding and seeking new growth. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the things that cause us to slip into stagnation and to settle and why settling and why settling for good will always keep us from greatness. So the first thing is when we compare, you know, comparing is bad on a, a, a multitude of fronts. If we compare to other people who are further along, so to speak, and we start to feel we're not enough, we're not good enough, uh, we're starting to feel like, you know, we should be doing better, we should be doing more, there's a certain amount of discontentment that comes from that. And perennially, that discontentment path is always there. It doesn't matter if you're doing half a million, a million, two million, or five million a year. There's always people who are doing more. There's always people who are making more, who have a bigger house, fancier car, uh, more beautiful spouse. There's always somebody kicking ass at a higher level if you look for that, if you're comparing. So greatness isn't necessarily about being the best and feeling like you have the biggest home, the fanciest car, and the most stacked bank account because there'll always be someone bigger and better than you. Let's be real. Even if you feel like you are the best, even if you feel like you know, you're know you the champion of the world, that doesn't necessarily mean you're happy. That doesn't necessarily mean you're fulfilled. And it certainly does not necessarily mean you're growing and expanding in more fulfillment and more joy in more of your purpose and more of your calling. So comparing will always lead to suffering in some form or another. But one of the ways that we compare that keeps us stuck in good as opposed to expanding into great is that when we start to do relatively well and we enter the quote unquote top producer status, we can compare ourselves with average and that can be a hiding place. It can be a hiding place where we say, hey, I'm doing pretty good. Pat ourselves on the back, right? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing better than most. And that becomes an excuse to no longer take risks, no longer expand out of the comfort zone, no longer build new muscle, no longer have our sights on higher summits to conquer. And we just want to maintain the status quo and it becomes a hiding place because we wanna play it safe and we wanna just stay comfortable. We don't wanna work more. We don't want to expand into higher ground. I was talking with a lady yesterday. She'd been in the game since 2005, 15 years. She was closing four deals a month. She was making about 16K a month. She had five years left in her career, or rather three years left in her career. And she was comfortable making 16K per month. And she wanted to make maybe five, 6K more per month, but it really wasn't that important to her. She didn't really want to have to work any harder. She didn't really want to have to uh, invest anything in her business. She didn't really want to take any risks. She didn't really want to stretch out of her comfort zone in any shape or form. And so she was just trying to maintain the status quo. The problem with that is you're either growing or dying. You're either expanding into new growth or you're starting to shrivel up and die. And get stuck in the rut of stagnation or worse, regression. And stagnation always leads to regression, not expansion. So comparing your good results to the average is a great way to soften. It's kind of like the fat guy who says, I'm not fat, I'm just big bone. No, you're freaking fat. And until unless you tell yourself the truth, you're never gonna do what it takes to get fit. 
So when you tell yourself softeners, like I'm doing better than most and I'm doing pretty dang good and you kind of toot your own horn, what that does is, well, it's great to celebrate your wins. And while it's great to celebrate your progress and why I'm a huge fan of celebrating and praising progress, you don't want to do it in a way where you're coddling your comfort zone and you're using it as a hiding place because you're softening the problem. You're saying, hey, you know, I'm cool. I'm happy either way. I'm kind of happy if I expand. I'm happy if I'm not. I'm cool either way and I'm content either way. And I don't really care whether I expand or not. I don't care if I grow or not or I don't. I don't care if I'm taking new ground or I don't. That kind of attitude will lead to complacency and complacency always leads to stagnation. It corrodes your fire. It corrodes your white hot fire of desire for expansion when you do that because it's a hiding place. Good, when you compare good to average, that's a hiding place where you start to play it safe, play it small, and that is death rattle to expansion and growth. Have you noticed? So that's one thing to think about. Another thing to think about is that the comfort zone always leads to complacency. So what do we want to do, right? This is the human condition. When you're making 100K, you want to make 200K. When you're making 200K, you want to make 300K and so on. So there's that's good. That's healthy. That's the desire for expansion and growth. But what starts to happen many times is we're making 100K or 200K or 300K. We say, I'm comfortable here. I don't want to change it, right? And it's that kind of attitude, that kind of perspective where you start to say, I'm comfortable and the comfort zone becomes that shrine that you worship from, right? I want to remain comfortable. And you start to worship at the altar of comfort. That is death rattle to joy and expansion and fulfillment and the thrill of growth. Because when you start to worship at the altar of comfort, the goal is not growth anymore. The goal is comfort. And those two are at odds with each other. If you want to step into your fullest potential, if you want to have the thrill of victory, if you want to have the, the juice of fulfillment, it's always inextricably linked with growth. Have you noticed? It doesn't matter if your bank account is stacked. It doesn't matter how many zeros and commas you have in your account. What matters is a positive trajectory. What matters most is trajectory, direction, not outcome, not arriving at a particular outcome, but the trajectory you're on. That's what matters. So in other words, if you know that you're expanding and you're growing and you're doing better than you did last week and you're doing better than you did last month and you're moving in the right direction with the right trajectory, that always gives you more fulfillment than feeling like you've arrived and you've attained something or somewhere. Have you ever noticed that where you achieve something, you achieve an outcome, maybe you know, you've always wanted to get to 1 million in volume a month or you always want to get to 2 million in volume a month. You get there and you're like, this is great, this is cool, I got a nice paycheck. Uh, but then you're like, okay, is that all there is, right? It's like, there isn't a lasting sense of fulfillment from just getting to that level of volume. The level fulfillment is about wanting to now get to that next level of growth, right? Where it's like, I got to 1 million, now I want to get to 2 million. Not because of the money necessarily, but because I'm able to serve more people, help more people. I'm able to grow and expand and that growth and expansion feels good, right? It's like, I continue to build muscle and become a better version of myself. And that's the spout underneath which the good stuff pours out. That's the zone where we feel fulfilled, right? Not where we get complacent and we start to coddle our comfort zones and trying to maintain the status quo. Now, there is no maintaining of any status quo. Here's the truth of the matter. You're either growing or you're dying. So that's something that we need to continually bring back into our hearts and minds, that that complacency leads to stagnation. And that stagnation leads to rot. It leads to growing moss. It leads to the stress of going backwards and the stress of feeling unfulfilled. Like we have a human need to feel like we're contributing. We have 
the human need to feel like we're growing. We have a human need to have the excitement and the adventure of something new, new distinctions, new dendrites firing, new places to see, new experiences to be had. There's a human need to have the uncertainty that comes with adventure, conquering new lands. If you play the video, the same video game over and over again and you stay at the same level, it gets boring, right? If you read the same book over and over and over and over and over again without seeing it from new perspective with new eyes, it gets boring, right? If you just walk the same route over and over and over again and you're not bringing new perspective or new insight, it gets boring. So there's a need for the uncertainty and the adventure of conquering new lands and stepping into new territory. On the flip side, complacency, which is an outgrowth of the comfort zone, leads to stagnation. So first, we call our comfort zone. We, we worship at the altar of our comfort zone. Next comes complacency. We get complacent. We're less rigorous with our schedules. We're less rigorous with ourselves. We just want to be comfortable. And then that leads to stagnation. That's one of the reasons why, frankly, I take cold showers Monday to Friday because I don't want to eat from the bread of complacency. I don't want to just be a civilian slipping into my comfort zone, sitting on my laurels and worshiping this holy grail of comfort and just having a warm shower because the warm shower represents for me the comfort zone. I do that on the weekend to add texture to my life, to enjoy the warmth and to savor the warmth. And believe you me, when you take a cold shower Monday to Friday, you really savor the warm showers on Friday and on Saturday and Sunday. So I take a cold shower, not because I'm cheap and I don't wanna spend the money to heat up my water. I do it because it's, an energizing, invigorating, life-enhancing discipline that reminds me that I'm never to eat from the bread of my comfort zone as a lifestyle. I want my lifestyle to be continually in warrior mode where I'm warrioring up, I'm manning up, I'm championing up, I'm wintering up, I'm stepping into the best version of myself every day and that means I do not eat from the bread of my comfort zone. Does that mean I don't take a cat nap once in a while when I'm feeling a little haggard in the middle of the day? No, I'll do that if I notice that my productivity is waning and I'm hitting the point of diminishing returns. Sometimes I'll take a 15, 20 minute cat nap in the middle of the day to recharge. I'm not doing that to be lazy. I'm doing that to enhance my productivity because then I'll come back, maybe take an afternoon uh, 20 minute nap maybe have a, a half a cup of Java, and then I'm recharged for the rest of the day. I'm ready to conquer, kick ass, and take names for the rest of the day. So I do it as a lifestyle ritual and routine, whether it be the cat nap if necessary, or the cold shower, to be able to continually expand into bringing my absolute best, to playing full on and full out and bringing my best to the table. And if I feel like I am not bringing my best, that is, again, if I allow myself to say, this is okay, this is cool, you deserve to be comfortable, you deserve to just relax, you deserve to you know, wake up at seven o'clock, not exercise, you deserve to take the warm showers Monday to Friday, you deserve to just kind of coast and you know, take more time off and take my uh, my days off early, maybe instead of getting off at 5.30 or 6, I'll get off at 4. You deserve to just kind of coast. You've been working hard. If I make that my mentality as my new normal, that leads to stagnation. That's why I take my cold showers because it gets me fired up. It gets me absolutely feeling like I, I'm ready to conquer the world, like I can step through anything any challenge, any obstacle. If I can get myself to take a cold shower, I can get myself to do freaking anything. I feel like I'm ready to walk through a brick freaking wall after I take that cold shower because I feel invigorated. I feel excited. I feel energized. And that's the antithesis to 
complacency. And notice that the cold shower is not comfortable, is it? But it gets me feeling unstoppable. So usually the disciplines that get you feeling unstoppable are not comfortable. The things that get you feeling on fire are not comfortable, whether that be exercising in the morning, whether that be taking a cold shower, whether that be reaching out to potential referral partners, even if you don't feel like it, there's a discipline in that, that when you do it, it's empowering, but it's never comfortable. Things that are empowering are rarely comfortable. And that's why, you know, everyone wants to be a champion. Not many people are willing to do what it takes to become a champion. Everyone wants to be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broke, and unhappy. Why? Because it takes something. It takes you stepping out of your comfort zone. So you stepping into greatness, you stepping into the best version of yourself, you stepping into your fullest calling, your fullest potential will always be at odds with your comfort zone. It will always be outside of your comfort zone. So that's why greatness is the growth zone and the growth zone is always on the other side of your comfort zone. You want to step into your greatness. You want to step into your fullest potential. You want to create a legendary legacy. It's always going to be inextricably linked with you getting comfortable being uncomfortable. You getting comfortable being uncomfortable. In other words, it's normal for you to be uncomfortable. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Easy for me to say. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He wasn't Mr. Olympia over and over and over again because he was coddling his comfort zone. He was Mr. Olympia because every single day he was trying to step even more potently into the pain because he knew the more pain, the more strain, the more gain. He thrived on the pain. He loved the grind of clanging and banging in the gym. He loved the pain of the daily disciplines because they knew he knew that every time he he stepped more into that pain, he was stepping closer to the gain of being a champion, of being a legend, of achieving his dream. And so it is with you, my friend, that if you want to step into the best version of yourself and create a legendary legacy and kick ass into games like never before and be the hero for your family and make more money in one month than you used to make in three, six, nine, 12 months. And to be able to do what you want, when you want, how you want, with whom you want, and have that freedom and that flexibility and to be able to just go and take your family to Disney, five-star first class, or to be able to have a kick-ass top talent team that manages your business so it's running like a finely old machine in your absence, to be able to have a second home on the beach, to be able to ride in that wicked whip or live in that beautiful house, and just to be able to create that incredible life, that legendary life, that epic life, it's always going to be on the other side of your comfort zone. It's always going to be with you cultivating a lifestyle of being comfortable, being uncomfortable. That's the champion's way. That's the winner's way. And so I think I consider that as you look at your dreams and your goals and what you want to accomplish in your life, the biggest thing that holds you back from achieving it is all your lame excuses why you can't or why you won't. Do the simple disciplines of success that get you stepping out of your comfort zone to make that dream a reality. Because that dream always comes with disciplines. The dream is free. However, the discipline is sold separately. The dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. It takes hustle. It takes discipline. It takes grinding. It takes feeling the fear and do it, doing it anyways. It feels, it, it takes you Noticing it's not convenient, it's not comfortable, you're not in the mood, but you say, screw it, let's do it, because you're more committed to your dream than you are your comfort zone. And so by virtue of you committing to your dream, you're also committing to making it a lifestyle choice to do things when you don't feel like doing them, to feel the pain, to feel the strain and say, screw it, let's do it, no pain, no gain, and to thrive in it, to eat it for freaking breakfast all day every day like Arnold Schwarzenegger did where he thrived in the pain and he ate it for breakfast and turned it into muscle turned it in, into gain and that's what put him at the top of the stack that what that's what put him into legendary status that's what put him 
in the champion status is having this voracious, insatiable appetite to push through the resistance of the comfort zone, to push through the fear, to push through the pain, to push through the resistance, to push through the I can't do it, the I don't feel like it, the I'm not in the moods and say, hey, screw it, let's freaking do it. Because I'm willing to do what most people aren't willing to do today. So I can have the results most people aren't going to have tomorrow. And that's the winner's way. So if you've been listening to this right now and you know you're capable of so much more than you've been achieving. And perhaps you've been saying to yourself, I should be doing more. I should be doing better. Perhaps you've been saying, hey, I'm doing better than most. I'm doing better than average, but I don't want to settle. I don't want to get complacent. I don't want to drift. I want to drive. I don't want to react. I want to respond. I don't want to settle. I want to soar. I don't want to slip into stagnation. I want to constantly charge up the mountain into growth. And if you're feeling like you know you have so much more to give and so much more to grow into, but perhaps you're lacking clarity and certainty and direction on what to do and how to do it, you know that you could be bringing more value to your realtors, but you just don't know what you could give them that's unique because frankly, no one taught you and your sales manager or the owner of your company, they're believing in you, they're seeing the greatness in you, but they can't give you that which they don't have. They give you a pat on the back, say go get them tiger and that's pretty much it, right? They can teach you, teach you how to get the loan closed once you get the lead in the door, but how do you get more quality leads? How do you get more solid top producing realtor partners without the hell of cold calling? How do you get them chasing you instead of you chasing them? How do you do it in a way that allows you to maintain your dignity, that allows you to have the cookie? You're in the power position so you can flip the script so that they need you more than you need them. How do you mine the gold from your database without using cookie cutter crap from your company's CRM that's snoring, boring, Dullsville? that puts people in a, a coma the moment they read it because it's just so boring. How do you create kick-ass killer content that's compelling, that gets people engaged, that gets people wanting to do business with you? How do you build that top of mind awareness so that when they think mortgage, boom, you're the only logical choice? How do you become the only logical choice in your market on Google? So when people do a search in your local market, Again, you're the number one mortgage choice with more five-star reviews than any of your competitors. How do you systematize that process? How do, we, how do you get out of your own way so that you're no longer the bottleneck in your business? All these different questions are the questions we answer and we have battle-tested systems, tools, campaigns, plug-and-play methods, formulas, and recipes to help you win. We've been doing this for 15 years. This ain't our first rodeo. This is what we do all day, every day. We eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's why people reach out to us for help because they realize they don't have time in the day to figure out all this stuff themselves. And they don't want to try and reinvent the wheel and try and figure this out on their own. They realize that they could try and figure this out on, the thing or in the, on their own for decades and never get to it. Just like someone fumbling around with a Rubik's Cube. You could be messing around with that Rubik's Cube, switching you know, the different colors, one block at a time, one line at a time for hours, for weeks, for years and never solve it. Or you can hand it over to a master of the Rubik's Cube and within three to five minutes, you've got it solved. There's no brownie points to the bank for doing it the hard way, friends. There's no merit badges for banging your head against the wall, spinning your wheels, trying to reinvent the wheel. There just isn't. And so that's why people reach out to get our help. That's why people hire us because they don't want to mess around. They just want to get straight to what works. They just want to take the shortest path to the cash. They want to condense timeframes and turn decades into days. So if that's you and you're a residential mortgage professional, you're on 100% commission, you have an 80 basis points or higher comp plan, and you're wanting to at least add an extra $100,000 to your annual income, at least, and you're wanting to figure out how to work smarter instead of harder, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be, 
And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like and how to do that. If not, frankly, we will be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you leave the call with massive value. Chances are more clarity than you have ever received in your entire career when it comes to what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you'd like to get clarity on how to create a breakthrough in your business with true professionals that have been doing this for 15 years who know what it takes to win without messing around doing it the hard way, I invite you to take advantage of this breakthrough call where we can just have a chat, have an honest conversation by booking a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So go ahead and book a call if that's you, if you fit that profile and we'll have a chat and see how we can help you. All right, guys. So that's what I got for you today. We've been talking today about why settling for good holds us back from greatness. And I trust you got some distinctions on how to continually charge up the mountain, continually stay in the growth zone, continually can expand into the best version of yourself and tap your full potential and step into the fullness of what greatness means to you, creating greatness in your legacy, greatness in your leadership, greatness in who you are and who you're becoming. So thanks for hanging with me. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Again, if you're picking up what I'm putting down and you'd like to learn more about how we can help you pour gasoline on the fire and take things to a whole other level and step into your greatness like never before, I invite you to take advantage of a breakthrough call with us by booking it at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me, friends. Be blessed. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.